Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference, brought to you in partnership with Animal Evacs New Zealand and our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Before we start, we have a few basic housekeeping items. We want to bring your attention to an important update regarding the conference schedule. There was an error with the Australian times for the New York sessions, which are D, F, and H on the initial schedule. Please visit our website at www.gadmc.org for the updated and corrected schedule. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled. So if you have questions, please use the Q&A box and we will endeavor to answer these at the end of the presentation. This year we have enabled multilingual closed captioning. So if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, click on the closed caption icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. We encourage you to use the hashtag G-A-D-M-C-O-N-F in your posts on social media to help us spread the word about the conference. A short evaluation will be made available when you exit the session. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help to shape the next SCADMAC conference. Finally, a reminder that the video recording of this presentation and all other presentations will be available later this year after it has been properly edited. It is a privilege to have Kubilay Kaptan with us today. He is a researcher at the University of Minho, Turkey, and will be speaking to us today on the effect of the February 2023 earthquakes on livestock in Turkey. Kubilay, please. Thank you very much, and thanks for having me. One small correction, University of Minho is in Portugal, so I am joining from Portugal, and I would like to say hello to everyone, and I am really glad to be with you today. Basically, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I have completed my master's degree and PhD degree in civil engineering, but since I am related to disaster for about 25 years right now, starting from my graduation, I am basically working also on this field. So based on this experience, I am also working for IFRC, International Federation of Red Cross, in different earthquakes, in different disasters. I played a role as a delegate, construction delegate. So uh, based on this experience, I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions with you about the earthquake, the last earthquake that happened in Turkey. So let me start with the earthquake in Turkey that we had in 6th of February. The first one, in fact, unfortunately, we had two main earthquakes between two hours. The first one around 10, around 3, had a magnitude of 7.8 and hit the south part of Turkey. After nine hours, a second major earthquake hit the same region. They were very close, and it was 7.5. Just to compare the magnitude of the earthquakes, let me tell you that fact. 99 Marmara earthquake had a magnitude of 7.6. And Chile earthquake, or uh, the, the, the Haiti earthquake, it was above 8. So the magnitude was a big for Turkey, but since Turkey is an earthquake-prone country, we wouldn't say that, we shouldn't say that it was an unexpected earthquake. All the reports coming from the officials, coming from the universities, coming from the NGOs, stated that this region is expecting an earthquake with a magnitude of 7.5. So it was not an unacceptable, a sudden thing that surprised everyone. Maybe I mean, maybe it surprised some people, but
but certainly did not surprise me or the people who are in is in this in this business. And another thing is, after 7.6 earthquake in 1999, we thought and talked to everyone that, okay, this is a milestone. After this earthquake, something will be different in Turkey. We are going to change the regulations. We are going to change the disaster management system, the way that we look at it. We are going to change lots of things, and we are going to learn from that one. In fact, we did. We did lots of things, definitely. We changed regulations. But unfortunately, after 24 years, after this major earthquake, now when I look at what happened at the region, I see that everything has changed. Just state as a written report, nothing else. 90% of them, I would say, were not applied, didn't go to practical. It was all theoretical. Let me show you why I say like this. Okay, this is the region as you can see. The first, the big red dot is representing the first earthquake and the small red dot is representing the second earthquake. They are very close together. They all happened in mainly in Karaman Maraş, which is very near to uh, the, the sea, Mediterranean Sea. But basically 11 cities are mainly affected. And official number for the, for the loss of people was 50,500. And we should be very cautious about that number because in 1990 earthquake, the official number, which was announced, announced by the parliament was 17,000, 17,000. And the unofficial number that we worked out was 47,000. What is that big difference? Why is that big difference? Because the way that we count uh, the death toll depends on the legal document. Unfortunately, after, after researching everything, going to municipalities, going to local uh, NGOs, going to local authorities, me and other people from the other universities stated that, in fact, the real number was about 47,000, but it was just announced 17,000. So this one was announced 50,500, and again, some researchers have uh, done some work on that one, and we have concluded that the real death toll is about 150,000. Of course, there, was, there were lots of people homeless, there were lots of damages in the infrastructure, in the structure, uh, road damages, damages at the airports, dam damages, lots of things. As you expect from an earthquake uh, in a country which is not very prepared for it. Let me continue and let me give you some numbers of the region before the earthquake. I told you that 11 cities are affected, provinces are affected. It is it's is a different and a little bit weird region because it is not a very touristic region. It has two cities near the sea, and it has also border with Syria, which you know there are lots of problems. Then it goes a little bit inside Turkey, which are some mountain areas or some uh, valleys near the mountains. Although this region is 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 very near to sea and we are near to agricultural process of Turkey. Unemployment rate is very high in the region. It's about 40%. Informal employment across the disaster region is around 40. So we had a very big problem about that one. And in total of these 11 provinces, 40 million people were living, 14 million people. 
and 97% of this population were living in the cities, in the major areas. Only 3% were living in the rural areas. And additionally, we had about 2 million migrants, immigrants who came from Syria, Iraq, a little bit Afghanistan, a little bit Pakistan, and they were living in this area, mainly in Hatay, just here, mainly in Hatay, but also some of them were distributed to other cities also. I am saying this because we had some um, temporary shelters for these people, and we were not sure about the disaster profile of these places. So this is basically it about the region when you look at the population. When you look at what we lived after the earthquake, based on the, uh, the extent of the damage, you can see that just looking part of the agricultural part, the main damage was on the irrigation facilities, dams, some local and official buildings, some flood control facilities, land consolidations, unfortunately, water drilling equipments, and animal losses. But I should mention here that the numbers are given here, although are given by um, the, 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 the local authorities, and it was then used by the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO. I'm still, and lots of researchers are still not sure about the, the real numbers. This is just a draft estimate. Please keep in mind that one, please. Okay. So you can see the big picture of Turkey. Here right now, you can see the affected region. FAO stated that the earthquake severely affected 16 million people in Turkey and 11 agricultural cities that account for over 20% of the country's food production. This is more or less correct, if it's about 17%, but it's a big number for Turkey, definitely. And there's a little bit discussion, there is lots of discussion going on about um, the, the agricultural fields, whether which part we should keep, which part we should keep, which part we should sell, should we sell, should we sell. And this discussion is going for about 15 years right now. I mean, Turkey is still going on, unfortunately. And FAO stated also that the region affected by the earthquake, known as Turkey's fertile crescent, yeah, okay, yeah, we sometimes say that, and constitutes 15% of the agricultural gross domestic product and contributes to 20% of Turkey's agricultural food exports. Because we have agriculture infrastructure, we have livestock, we have crops, we have fisheries, we have aquaculture, we have beeves, bees. So we had lots of different and various things related to agriculture and the other issues in the region. Let's see what happened after the earthquake. Again, these are very draft numbers. FAO again stated that approximately 50,000 small and large livestock, around 3,000 bees, and nearly 5,000 domestic animals were observed to be perished in the region. Thousands of animals were injured due to earthquake impact, and many animals had to be sold at prices below their value due to impossibility and compulsion by their owners. And these are all facts. I'm, I just don't agree with the numbers. And it's very normal because nobody has really measured or counted how much animals we lost, whether it is a livestock, whether it's a uh, pet, whether it's a bird, whether it is a bee, whatever it is. Why? Because the region, the authorities, the local authorities, the municipalities, farmers, Everyone involved in this thing, in this business, were not ready for a disaster. 
for not ready for any disaster, for not particularly ready for earthquake, definitely. Although, although even official reports were saying that, please get ready. But they just said, did. They just said, get ready. And they just wrote how to get ready, but they didn't implement it, they didn't apply it. So no one was ready. Let me continue. When it comes to fishing industry, let me show you on the map. Although you see Karaman Marash here, this dark blue region, it doesn't have any place near to sea, as you can see. It is not on the seaside as Hatay or Adana. The main fishing industry are here. Although Hatay has a big labor, sorry, it has a big uh, harbor. So there is very export and import, important export and import business are going through Hatay and it, dis it is distributed through the region. But Karaman Marash is the main center of fishing industry in the region. So what happened was, due to the damage incurred at some private sector inland aquaculture facilities, that's what the number uh, has been got from these uh, people, 101 tons of fish and 37 million fish died. It resulted with some number which is not very important. And unfortunately, after the earthquake, in a few days, there was a normal number of fish deaths occurred in the region. And 14 facilities, aquaculture facilities, suffered serious damage during the earthquake. And it seemed that neither the building nor the people, and of course the animals, were not ready at all with an earthquake like this. When it comes to bee, bees, this is what has been reported. So just again, please keep in mind that this is just an official number. They said that approximately 6,000 out of the 1.6 million beehives in the region have been damaged. But when I visited the region and um, just walk around and draw over the region, I have seen that the damage is much, much more than the official statements, unfortunately. Here's a little short brief of what we lived. Again, in 11 districts, in 11 cities, 40 million people were living, which is about 16% of Turkey's population. We lost about 50,500 people, which is officially announced. When you look at the employment rate, it is very low, and unemployment rate is very high. The share of the agriculture sector in this region is about 14% of Turkey's GDP. The number of registered agricultural enterprises and farmers in the region is approximately 270,000. So again, roughly 20% of Turkey's production has been carried away in this region. And vegetable production is about 15% of Turkey. And at the end, according to FAO, a loss of $5.1 billion in Turkey's food industry and earthquake-related production losses of an estimated $25 billion, which also caused and still causing, unfortunately, food prices and inflation. And they also stated that uncertain number of farmers and breeders affected because of the earthquake. I'm not going to go to other uh, inf effects because of the earthquake. There are lots of it. But let me 
use my time efficiently and tell you a little bit about the problems that we normally faced and that have been faced after the disaster. If you do not mind or if, if you do not take care about your animals. In Turkey, we had the spillage of food and the water supply. We had a disease affecting, affecting many animals. That's what the uh, veterinarian says, have told us. Any disease or infection naturally transmissible from animals to humans, we didn't have that one, but I included it because it has been lived after other disasters, especially in India. When I was there in Bush earthquake, we had this. Animal bites, we also lived this. The significant impact on public mental health due to the emotional involvement of the owners with the animals, we tremendously lived this. Okay. In the region, in Turkey, People we lost and the people survived who lost their, some part of their families, were mainly talking about the loss of their pets and the shock that they lived have not been cured so far. And the damage to both domestic and wild animal species in the affected region, definitely. What should we do? Some suggestions about that one. As some of the speakers have announced so far, have talked so far, I will also emphasize the local authorities' importance because everything starts from there. Local emergency management committee should be formed, involving local people to take care about the livestock. A safe shelter for farm animals and a disaster plan to protect properly facilities and animals should be planned ahead of time in conjunction with the local uh, community and should be applied. Training should be given. Drills should be made. Exercises should be repeatedly made until everyone involved in this thinks that, okay, we are ready. But if it, it is just on the paper, if it's not applied, zero importance, zero importance. How much nice, how much beautiful reports you make, it doesn't make any difference if you don't apply them, if you don't use them, if you don't make people believe in it. The third one, third suggestion, animals should be evacuated and taken to the shelter as soon as there is news on, of an disaster. Every animal must have some form of durable and visible identification. The fourth one is the committee should have arrangements for appropriate transport suitable for specific animals. A farm disaster kit should be prepared in advance. And some animals, you should give special care to them. Let me come and give you in this in the dead view of disaster management plan if we replace livestock management during disaster kind of livestock disaster management plan as a normal disaster management plan it should have three basic phases the first one is prevention so construction of shelters should be carried during this phase Untethering the animals when shelter is not available should be done. Efforts should be made, collect feed, other kind of things, and proper training should be given to the people who are involved in it. During the relief case, proper care should be taken to protect the animals against snakes and reptiles, which can be poisonous. And at this point, let me show you two news from Turkey. We still have this news, unfortunately. And the news say that earthquake victims staying in tents are in danger because of snake and scorpions 
although in the region we I mean, the, the 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 fact that we know that there is only one poisonous snake species in the region but uh, it is very disturbing for people definitely and unfortunately people are still living in some of them are still living in um, temporary shelters some of them are living in uh, permanent shelters and the houses are being constructed right now because of the weather uh, and because of the loss of demolition construction and demolition work going on unfortunately lots of animals like this are are in, are in the tents are in the region so people are very disturbed about that one this is another problem that we are facing and no one knows what to do about it unfortunately let me turn back proper arrangement of for quick movement of veterinary personnel to reach animals for treatment, vaccination, and deworming should be carried away during the relief process. This also involves this news. And this is another news that we had to struggle with when I was in Turkey. Because that's what always we live. People start to talk about if there are lots of snakes, can this be a sign of a new earthquake. This is something that you have to deal if you are in a disaster management process. Sometimes people will tell you that today is the moon is too shiny. Yesterday, a plane was crashed. The tides are so big. So, all of this could be a sign of a new big earthquake. And this is another thing that you should deal with. Um, in the region in Turkey, there is no, uh, let's say, certain strict beliefs against animals. So, but I mean, this is still a problem that you have to deal uh, to, to, to make the people and the human being and the animals live properly. Let me go back my last stage, which is rehabilitation. Livestock owners should be provided with compensation in case of livestock loss or diseased condition. Working bulks and milk animals should be provided from other unaffected regions that are surplus in these animals. Reconstruction of veterinary and AI centers that are damaged to the disaster should be done, and permanent feed circuit system should be set up in disaster prone areas. Unfortunately, I have not, I cannot tell you any um, good practice about this. The things that I shared with you are the things that we should avoid before the disaster, during the disaster, after the disaster. But as a person in a disaster management process, I would say that the animal parts are always, is always neglected. Okay, we have animals, we have pets, this is one issue. We have livestock, this is another issue. And we have some white animals, this is the last issue. And we should prevent them as we prevent, as we try to prevent the human being. So animal part of it should be definitely in disaster management systems, plans, whatever you have. And Good these night. plans should be- I, I am yes. so sorry to interrupt you. We do need to wrap up and we have a couple questions we want to I ask. I am finished, thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, sir. The first question is, are there any data available about the number and distribution of animals in this region in peacetime or in non-disaster time? For the peacetime, yes, we have. Distribution of livestock. Um, I think the Ministry of uh, Agriculture has announced it, has published it one year 
before the disaster happened. It was in 2022. And the reports which are coming from FAO, United Nations, are using these numbers. Are they reliable? Yes, they are reliable. Uh, the number of before the disaster are correct. The number after the disaster, unfortunately, is not correct. Okay. And I do apologize. Um, we had one more question, if you can answer it. Of course. A couple seconds. Were these losses compensated or replaced by the government? Unfortunately, not. Uh, they are not compensated. Uh, I'm, there's a plan for that one. But because of uh, the economical situation of Turkey right now, uh, in fact, I am not sure, or the government is not sure whether they are going to apply these plans or not. But at the at the at the moment, at the moment, unfortunately not. Thank you, thank you so much, Kublai. This was a Thank wonderful you for having me. Presentation thank so full of much. information.